Hello, and welcome to lecture 10. We're going to look at factorial experiments that are embedded in a, a randomized block design. But really, uh, I've got these underlined for a reason. There's a difference between experiments and design. And the experiments, is, especially with, with respect to a factorial experiment, that's where we're trying to learn about the relationships amongst the variables, but specifically the levels in those variables. The design is how we create the experiment in order to reduce the unexplained variation. So we've got the experiment, which is what the scientist wants, and the randomized block design, which is what's used to do the experiment to reduce the unexplained variation. Now we're going to be looking at uh, section 1041, and the key part of it, that chapter, of that section, is how the degrees of freedom are broken down. So I'm going to spend some time going through how to break down those degrees of freedom. Um, so I'm going to erase. Doesn't do too bad. And the way I like to think of this is I've got my entire experiment and design and everything. I've got all my degrees of freedom right there. And these are going to be n minus 1 where capital N is the sample size, the total sample size, all of the measurements we've taken. And the minus one because we have to estimate one parameter to, to do the basic analysis here. Now if what we're looking at is a basic two-way factorial design with one blocking variable, then N is going to be A times B, oops, oh, it is A times B times C minus 1, a times c times b minus 1, where b is the number of blocks, a is the number of levels in factor a, and c is the number of levels in factor c. And we're going to go ahead and assume balanced design. In fact, we're going to assume one measurement in each group just to simplify things. If we assumed a balanced design but more than one measurement, we'd have to multiply this by lowercase n which is the sample size in each of those uh, factor levels, uh, com factor level combinations. So now, as usual, this is going to be broken up into two parts. It can be broken up into the part that is explained and the part that is unexplained. The part that is unexplained we tend to refer to as the error or the residuals. The part that is explained that comes from the blocking and from the ex uh, factorial experiment itself. So there's two parts here. There's the blocking and there's the experiment. Degrees of freedom for blocking is going to be the number of blocks minus one. Degrees of freedom for the experiment is going to be a c minus 1. a is the number of elements, number of levels in factor a, c is the number of levels in factor c. In fact, we can even break down this a c minus 1 into its three parts. Part 1 being the marginal effect of a. Part 2 being marginal effect of C, and 3 is the interaction of A by C. And so marginal, you can think of those as main effects, synonyms. So marginal is going to be A minus 1, this marginal is C minus 1, and this interaction is going to be a minus 1 times C minus 1. And we can't break the blocking down anymore. And the only degrees of freedom that we haven't figured out yet is the, well, the total explained here and then the total unexplained. But I want to show you some things. We have partitioned those degrees of freedom. Meaning that if we add up these three degrees of freedom, 
the a minus 1 plus the c minus 1 plus that a minus 1 times c minus 1. We should get a c minus 1. That's what it means to partition. It's to split it up into groups with no overlap and nothing left over. So let's just double check that I did my math right. So a minus 1 plus c minus 1 uh, plus a minus 1 times c minus 1. I can't do this, I have to do the FOIL. a minus 1 times c minus 1 is a c minus a minus c plus 1 plus a minus 1 plus c minus 1. Does that come out to a c minus a positive a cancel out minus c plus c cancels out minus 1. We've just shown that we have been able to partition this AC minus 1 from the experiment, the number of degrees of freedom from the experiment, into its three parts. The part for the, mar uh, for mar uh, for the uh, marginal for A, the part for the C, and the part for the interaction. So what happens if there's no interaction? Well, if there's no interaction, then this is different, which means this is going to be different, which means this will be increased. Think that, think that through. Okay, so we've shown that these three added together give us the AC minus 1. Let's add these two together to see what the degrees of freedom that's explained is equal to. It's nothing special. That's it. Now let's look at the unexplained. Well, unexplained says we are partitioning. The unexplained is just the total degrees of freedom minus what we've explained. Minus what we've explained. Well, can we simplify that? Yeah, we can. And the book does a very nice job of that. The book shows that that's equal to AC minus 1 times B minus 1. And to see that, we just have to explain, expand that product. This is ACB minus B minus AC plus 1. And we can now look at this and say, okay, that's equal to, we got an ACB and an ACD, a minus B and a minus B, a minus AC and a minus AC, and a plus 1, and those cancel out. So we've shown that the unexplained is just that AC minus 1 times B minus 1. partitioning the degrees of freedom so that you understand really where all the information is contained and the effects of leaving some things out. For instance, a minus 1 and c minus 1 are both positive numbers, by the way. So if I leave out the interaction term, that means this is going to decrease because this is just going to be a minus 1 plus c minus 1. So this will decrease. That means that this will decrease. That's never going to change. Since this decreases, that means that this unexplained is going to increase. It's going to be a different formula for it, by the way. But the unexplained variation is going to increase. Now let's take a step back and say, okay, what did we just do? Well, we left out a variable. We can think of this interaction term as another variable. So we're removing a variable from the model that leaves the unexplained variation to increase. Or conversely, if I want to reduce the unexplained variation, and we recall before, reducing the unexplained variation increases the power of the test. If I want to reduce the unexplained variation, I should include this interaction term. And then the book goes on to say, notice 
that this is not the same as an ABC interaction. Because we're, we're pulling the blocking out separately. This is not, this, this model is not That's not the model. We're not entering the blocking as being an interaction term. This is the model. Inter the, the blocking is entered only as a main effect, not as an interaction. Think about this. Pause here, that will be helpful. And with that, let's summarize this in something other than a picture. Let's go ahead and put this into a table. Racing that into a... Go do a ANOVA table. Or just a highly abbreviated ANOVA table. And this is eventually what we're going to get for the final stage on page 540. So the source source for the blocks, the degrees of freedom, is B minus 1. Thankfully, it doesn't erase too well, so you can actually see it. Degrees of freedom is B minus 1. The main effect, A. Main effect, A, was A minus 1. Main effect C that was C minus one. Interaction effect A minus one, C minus one. And then the unexplained part, which the book refers to as the experimental error. AC minus 1 times B minus 1. So this is how the book created that final stage. example here. Let's go ahead and look at the example from the book. This is example 9.6. I guess it's example 9.6 revisited. It's on page 541. So the blocking was the machine. Treatment A was time. Treatment B was heat. Or, I'm sorry, treatment C was heat. The interaction of time by heat. And then the experimental error. book changes notation here, went from calling the experimental error to the sampling error. Just put that in parentheses. According to this, there were four machines. Time, there were three times. There were two heats, and then 
and just doing the arithmetic, 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1. This is 3, I'm sorry, that's 2. 3 times 2 is 6, minus 1 is 5, times 3 is 15. said that's still the experimental error I'm sorry what do these degrees of freedom add up to 3 5 6 7 8 23 total sample size was... 96, I believe. Which means that the sampling error is 96 minus 1 minus 23. 72. talk about the partitioning. 96 minus 1 is the total degrees of freedom. Capital N minus 1. This 23 is the degrees of freedom taken up by this model. And that consists of 3 degrees of freedom given to the machine, 2 to the time, 1 to the heat, 2 to the interaction of time and heat, and 15 for the experimental error. And that leaves 72 degrees of freedom for that sampling error. So the experimental error and the sampling error are two different things. Experimental error is the error that's within the experiment itself. The sampling error takes into consideration the difference between the total degrees of freedom and that experimental degrees of freedom. It's everything that's left over. In other words, here's total. That's 95 degrees of freedom total. And then we're going to break that up into two parts. Oh, we'll use that. This will be the experiment part, and then everything else. And that everything else is the sampling error. Inside that experimental part, we've got one, two, three, we got two sources. And those two sources are the explained degrees of freedom and the unexplained, which we're calling the experimental error. And in this ex explained, we've got the blocking, we've got the A, we've got the C, and we've got the A by C. So using this light blue, block consists of 3, A consists of 2, C consists of 1, the interaction consists of 2, so the explained consists of 8, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 8. The experimental error is 15. 8 and 15 is 23, so everything here, according to the experiment, or dealt with by the experiment, is 23 degrees of freedom. And then the sampling error is everything that's left over, equals 72. Can pause, think through this. And again, the key is that all of those degrees of freedom are partitioned, are put into certain places. It can either be in within one of the parts of the experiment, either what's been explained or what hasn't been explained within the experiment. Or 
can be put in the sampling here. But it's got to be in one of these blue numbers, light blue numbers. And now you're wondering, okay, where did the sampling error come from? Well, in the original diagram I had here, remember I said, let's assume that there's no replications, that the number of measurements in each of those cells is one. And I said, if we do have replications, this wouldn't just be A times C times B minus one, it'd be little n times A times C times B minus one. In the example 9.6, n is not equal, little n is not equal to 1. There's replication involved. And it's that replication that gave us this, quote, sampling error. So that's where that sampling error came from. So really, if I wanted to do a, a, a more complete diagram, This left part is exactly the graphic that I had before. Starts out with the experimental part, then the blocking, and then the factorial. And this is B minus one. And this factorial was a C, is it AC minus one? And I broke this off into a minus 1, C minus 1, then A minus 1, C minus 1. And we did all these calculations, and this was AC minus 1 plus B minus 1. I'm sorry. Got one more thing coming up here. I explained. This was A, C, B minus 1, I believe. I believe this was A, C minus 1, B minus 1. And this is just going to be N, A, B, C minus 1, minus A, B, C minus 1. Being able to determine where your degrees of freedom are going helps you better understand the experiment. Now in the uh, computer program or the statistical programming uh, extensions to this, we're actually going to be doing a factorial experiment within a randomized block design. We're going to be working through example 9.6 revisited, showing how to get those tables at the end. And I do want to point out a couple things. One, pay attention to what your denominator is going to be in your F statistic. By default, all computer programs will have your mean squared error as your denominator for your F statistics. That will not always be the case. I mean, that will not always be the correct one to use. So be very careful on what your denominators are going to be. And in the, the, ex, and the uh, software, the extensions to this, the companions, there we go. Um, I talk through that a little bit. And the second is always understand your variables. Understand what is part of the factorial design, I'm sorry, what is a part of the factorial experiment and what's a part of the blocking design. And those are the two things that you really do need to pay attention to, not just for this video, not just for the companions for this video, but for everything. Be aware of your design and your experiment. Thank you very much.